How you doing? Doing all right. What do you have here? What I have is a belt buckle pistol. This is actually pretty cool. This was the concealed gun of all concealed guns, I right. guess. Right. It looks like this is the trigger right here. Right. A lot of the times what would happen is you would have a string tied to here and would run up through your arm and be tied to a ring or something on your sleeve. And then if you move your hand up, it would fire the gun. Mm -hmm. So kind of a sneaky little gun. I imagine there's no markings on it. Am I wrong? Is there markings? I have not seen any type of marking on it. Yeah, and that's because the guy making this wouldn't really want to advertise that he's the sneaky guy making these kind oh. of guns. It's definitely been used, and looks like it's got some rusting on it, but you would kind of expect that. Does it work? I have never fired it. I've never tried to fire it. The story has been lost. We don't really know where it came from, but it's been in the family for generations. OK. I'm not exactly sure how collectible this gun would be, because it is hard to figure out who made it. But I do know there is a market for this kind of stuff. So what would you like to do with it? I want to sell it. And how much are you looking for? I'd like to have $500. That seems pretty reasonable, actually. Um, I do need to know a little bit more about it before I go ahead and make you an offer. Give me just a moment. I'm going to go grab my guy, Alex, and see if he can tell us a little bit more about this. Don't go anywhere, all right? Sure. Thanks. Hi. Hi. I'm Alex. George, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, George. George has this pretty freaking cool belt gun. <laughs> George, you mind if I pick it up? Please do. Oh, wow. So my first feeling about this is that it's incredibly dangerous. <laughs> well, those were dangerous times back then. Yeah. So what's interesting about this is that the entire firing mechanism is contained behind this back plate here. And the trigger down here, it's got a loop through it. So there must be, in the original design of this, some type of lanyard or string or wire which would actually be able to fire it concealed. I'm going to take the belt off. Is sure. that all right? So this hammer is from an old shotgun, probably from the 1880s, okay. 1890s. And I think that's about what this dates. What I'm curious about is what caliber this barrel is. I'm wondering if that is a standard caliber for the time or if it's just a homemade piece of pipe. If it's a correct caliber of the time, would that make it more valuable than, say, if it was just a piece of pipe? Yes. And the reason of that is because if it's just a piece of pipe that somebody made and stuck on there, maybe it's a homemade thing that's not very old. If it's a caliber that was in use at the time, it would show me that it was made that way for a practical purpose. This is a caliber that measures the inside dimension of the bore. So that's right at 3.6, and that's really good, because 3.6 was actually a really standard percussion revolver caliber. So I don't think that this was a homemade prop or anything. I think somebody actually really did make this 1890s, probably, but it's a one-off. I don't think this was mass produced. I think it was made one at a time, maybe as something that they sold in a saloon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's that type of feel. It's got an old west kind of feel to it. OK, and what kind of price would you put on it? I, I think you need to see if it works. I would suggest that if you're OK with it, I have the correct lead balls for it, 36 caliber. And I think I strap it on, and we see how it works. As long as you're the one strapping it on, I'm all for it. <laughs> Would you be willing to meet us down at the range with this? I can do that. Sounds good. Uh, we'll see you down at the range okay. and uh, take a look around, and hopefully you enjoy your time here. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank see you. you. So I set up three big balloons so I wouldn't miss, even though I'm going to be very close. Well, I think even with this wind, you should be a good shot today. <laughs> I hope so. So I brought some supplies. I have black powder. I have 36 round lead balls, which that'll be the projectile. And I have some grease. And the grease is actually going to help me keep the powder and the ball in. I'm ready to see this thing working. OK. So you getting excited yet? I, I am excited. <laughs> All right. So let's see how I aim this. All right, so now to full cock. You ready? Go. Uh. 
<laughs> well, we got two. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it works. I don't know how much damage it would do to somebody, but it definitely would stop them, at least for a little bit. So what do you think it's worth? Well, there's not a whole lot out there to compare it to, but because it's antique, because it's from about 1890, I think there is a collector's value to it. I could see it selling between three and 4,000. OK. Thanks for coming out and testing it. All right, you're welcome. I'll All see right. you back at the event. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'll bring your stuff back. Don't worry, Alex. OK, thanks. All right, I'll give you 500 for it. Well, you know, Alex uh, had a little better opinion of it than that. How about we go 2,500? How about 1,500? We'll split the difference at 2,000. Maybe like 17 is probably the max I could do. I mean, it's really cool, but it is a very niche collector's market. All right, you got a deal. All right, well, I'm happy to have it, and um, we'll get you some cash. OK, thanks a lot. All right, thank you. I'll You're get this welcome. stuff. I got to get back to the event. OK.